Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. It's Tuesday, May 16th, and a mixed day in the markets. Let's take a look at Grain Edge's trading platform and see what the action was like today. Overnight, corn and wheat were in negative territory following USDA's crop progress report showing good corn planting progress. Soybeans, on the other hand, were heading higher into the morning break. The opening bell saw soybeans advance on fresh export news, helping push July back to the 970 mark. By the closing bell, soybeans had spent most of the day trending higher all the way into the close. On the settlement, soybeans were up 11, corn was unchanged, and wheat was up 1. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of the news that was shaping the trade today. First of all, we had a rare event of flash sales from USDA. They announced 132, excuse me, 132,000 metric tons of soybeans for old crop delivery to unknown destinations. That certainly got the soybean market in a buying mood. There had been a little bit of a rumor yesterday about that potential trade. Uh, it was driving the market higher on Monday before the NOPA crush number sent the market down. But overall, you know, we continue to see some buying on these dips and we're starting to push back into sort of the midpoint of this channel range we've been uh, trading for the last month and a half. Other news, let's talk about what's going on internationally because I think that's sort of what's driving the soybean market at the time being. Let's first focus on the situation in Brazil and how Brazil compares to the U.S. in terms of export competitiveness. So let's take a look at this next chart. This next chart shows the spread of FOB soybean prices at Brazil relative to the U.S. When you see this graph going higher, that means Brazil's price is getting more expensive relative to the U.S. When you see the chart going down or negative values, that means the Brazilian price is dropping relative to the U.S. So favorable for the U.S. is a positive value moving higher. Negative for the U or negative for the U.S. is a negative value moving lower. Now, where we're at today. Uh, is in red here, and I've highlighted the last five years. This is roughly uh, the May time period, which coincides with, you know, sort of post-harvest. This would be their November in Brazil, right after harvest is done. And what we tend to see in these time periods is obviously Brazil being a lot cheaper relative to the U.S. The exception certainly was last year. We saw Brazil's price uh, higher than the U.S. because of their short crop. Also, uh, the situation in China helped sort of stimulate demand, uh, a demand response at a time when their crop was low. Now, what's happened in the last few weeks is the Brazilian real has gotten stronger, making their price less competitive and therefore pushing this graph higher. So what we're seeing now is a situation where Brazil's price is still relatively strong, not only the strength of the Brazilian real, but that in turn has been uh, causing uh, Brazilian farmers to slow down their sales. They are roughly 10 to 20 percent below uh, their normal levels of sales for this time of year, according to some sources. So that is certainly favorable and maybe putting the bottom in the soybean market for the time being. And I want to stress that word time being because I'm not sure it will persist. But for the time being, we seem to be comfortable with inching this thing higher. The other thing I want to focus on is what's going on in China, because this obviously is our main customer of soybeans and what happens in their market drives the international soybean market. This is two values overlaid on the same chart. First of all, in purple, you have the Chinese soybean crushing margin, what, it, what their margin is for their crushing plants. And obviously those crushing plants are the primary driver of soybean imports. So when their margins are weak, then obviously they're not needing to buy much. In orange is the hog, uh, excuse me, the hog margin or the profitability of hog margins in China. Both of those numbers have been on the downward spiral for the first half of 2017, but soy crush margins have been improving since about mid-April, early April, actually about April 6th. So we have seen soy crush margins start to improve after collapsing in the first part of the year. Uh, we don't see much uptick in hog margins at this time, but that's not to say they won't improve. In red, in this red box, you'll notice where we were this time last year, much higher values and certainly the strength in the hog margin I attribute as to why we had such a massive run-up in the soybean market last year. So I think a lot of people are sort of sitting on the sidelines going, well, are we going to see a return like last year, a $3 rally in soybeans? I just don't think it's in the cards. The fundamentals are stacked 
horribly against that type of rally with Brazil sitting on a massive crop. Uh, but any sort of rallies would be welcomed at this time. Let's take a look at November bean action here. And this is a four hour chart from the Grain Hedge Trading Platform. Nice thing about the Grain Hedge Trading Platform, you can look at all sorts of different time intervals here from one minute up to weekly. And, and I've chosen a four hour time period because it shows pretty clearly this trend channel we have been in, starting back around April 15th on the low. And you can see these parallel trend lines running uh, in conjunction. We traded down to this trend line about two days ago, and we have been trying to push back up. I suspect speculators are trying to push us back up a little bit, uh, sensing that we may have some upside here. And so the, up, the midpoint of this channel is about 972. I wouldn't be surprised to see us continue to move up to that, maybe even get back up to the red line, although that may be a stretch. There are certainly a number of negative fundamentals weighing on this market, and I don't expect those to improve anytime soon. But in the time being, I think we have a, an upswing here that presents some opportunity. As always, if you'd like to learn more about how we can help you in your own grain trading situation, visit us at online at grainhedge.com. Take a demo of our trading platform and see all the valuable services you get for only $7 a trade. Have a great day. We'll talk to you on Wednesday.